The year of grace has struck a chord in the hearts of many Australian Catholics, but some are a bit unsure what exactly the year of grace is meant to be. So first, some background. A couple of years ago, it was suggested that what we needed in Australia was called a major ecclesial event. In other words, a big celebration in the church to heal our wounds, to overcome our divisions, and to gather our energies anew for mission. We needed to refocus. One suggestion was a national synod, which would perhaps have fitted the bill, but didn't win the support of all the bishops. Some of them thought it may have been the right idea, but it wasn't yet the right time. So a committee was set up to consider other possibilities, and that committee, which I chaired, eventually came up with the suggestion of the Year of Grace. This was welcomed unanimously and quite enthusiastically by the bishops, and this to me was one sign that the Year of Grace has emerged under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Year of Grace was not to be a program, but more like a retreat, a time to step aside a little and to refocus on what really matters. And what really matters in the church is Jesus crucified and risen. In the midst of all our busyness in the church, we can end up forgetting Jesus. And that's when the church begins to look like just another human institution, rather than the body of Christ, which is what the church really is. This kind of refocusing and remembering would lead us along a path of discernment, at the end of which we may know what kind of major celebration in the church would be best for us at this time. The bishops decided that the charter for the year of grace would be Pope John Paul's letter at the end of the Jubilee year of 2000, which bears the Latin title, Novo Millenio in Eunte, in English, Entering the New Millennium. In many ways, that letter was Pope John Paul's last will and testament to the church. And we felt that though the letter had been read perhaps, it hadn't yet been deeply received in the church here. The Pope's call in the letter is to start afresh from Christ, to contemplate the face of Christ anew, to see him present in our midst, not as a distant figure in some long lost past, but as presence and power here and now. The year of grace, as we came to call it, was to be a year of Jesus, in whom the fullness of God's grace, God's full and perfect love, comes to us. According to Pope John Paul, it's only the encounter with Jesus, seeing his face and hearing his voice, that brings true communion in the church, breaking down the walls of division. And it's only that experience of communion in the church that will empower us for the mission, the new evangelization, as it's sometimes called, that's God's call to us at this time. Jesus, communion, mission. This triple vision lies at the heart of the Pope's letter, and I'm glad to say, it's been taken to heart in the Archdiocese of Brisbane. After we'd decided for a year of grace from Pentecost 2012 to Pentecost 2013, Pope Benedict proclaimed the year of faith from the 11th of October this year to the Feast of Christ the King at the end of November next year. At first this seemed awkward, but upon reflection it has seemed providential. The years of grace and faith fit together perfectly. Grace is God's free gift to us, and our response is the faith that accepts the gift. So the two years fit together as neatly as God's gift and our response. It's when those two meet that we have the Christian life in all its power and beauty. That's what the bishops are hoping and praying for by the end of this 18-month-long journey of grace and faith.